I'm sure you've noticed that he... Yes? Well, that he is the type of person who would do anything to breed idle chatter. Yes, an idle chatter breeder. How many times we've told him, Dan, this is a scientific atmosphere we're employed in. And from Dr. Crocus all the way down to the most insignificant members of the custodial engineering staff, we would appreciate a minimum of subjective intercourse. So, if you can help us, Helen, and I'm sure you can, enormously, we would be most grateful. This is science, Helen. And science means progress. You do want progress, don't you, Helen? Yes, Miss Moray. I knew you did. Now, we will move directly into the specimen room. Actually, the laboratory floor was washed this afternoon by special arrangement with a day porter. I, uh... Just wanted to show her the blowhole. I'm sure that's all it was, Dan. The working conditions will be ideal for you in here. Now, you will be responsible not only for the floor area, but for the jars as well. But do be careful. Margarita once dropped a jar of assorted North Atlantic eels. It's four o'clock. Yeah, it's four o'clock. Holly, want a cracker at four o'clock? <laughs>
have a special rinsing technique. I can smell something. It's just a little vinegar in the rinse water. Oh, this is going in your file, Helen. You brought that vinegar just so these floors, oh, they're sparkling, Helen, sparkling. Marvelous, Helen, how well you've adjusted. Thank you, Miss Moray. Not everyone does, you know. By only last week, I had a problem with a porter on five who became too fond of a St. Bernard. They worked on. A lot of people can't seem to adjust. What do you mean, worked on? Helen, the animals here are used for experimentation. A lot of people can't seem to... Take Margarita, for instance. She'd fallen in love with the mice, all 300 of them. She seemed shocked when she found out the Dr. Crocus was using them at the rate of 20 or so a day in connection with electrode implanting. She noticed them missing after a while, and when I told her they'd been decapitated, she seemed terribly upset. Made one wonder if she thought we'd been sending them away on vacations or something. But I'm sure you understand, Helen, you have such insight. Let me call. Isn't it funny? Part I to look at these mammals, you would never suspect they were such rapacious carnivori. You. What do they want it for? Let well, they may have an intelligence equal to our own. If we could teach them our language or learn theirs, we might be able to communicate. Too. Wouldn't that be wonderful, Helen? I can't, to communicate? I can't understand you. Communicate, Helen. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh, yeah. When uh, Margarita found out that they were using this on the mice, she nearly fainted. No end of trouble. You mean they chopped the heads off 300 mice? No, Helen, you wanted progress, remember? That's horrible. Oh, Helen, you're so sensitive. Why, every laboratory in the country is doing this type of work. It's quite accepted. Every laboratory is chopping the heads off mice? Virtually. How many laboratories are there? Oh, I don't know. I suppose at least 5,000. 5,000 times 300. That's a lot of mice heads. Couldn't you just have one laboratory, chop the heads off a couple, and then spread the word? Helen, that is exactly what I mean. Let me simply say that it would be best if you didn't become too fond of the subject animals. When you're here a little longer, you'll learn, well, there are some things we just have to accept on faith. As you see, Helen, I vary the pastry at every break. I think it makes for a more interesting perk you up. Now, I'm going to leave you two alone. This is your time for pleasure and relaxation. You have six and one half minutes left. anything to anybody. What thing? The mammal fish. 
Nope. Not one word. Nope. Some of the companies have isometrics and dancing during the coffee break. What? They play music and the employees dance. It's supposed to be much more effective than an ordinary perk you up. Nothing that sounded like you. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I uh, heard a rumor that you pant has dancing. What? Du pant has dancing. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. I don't blame you for not talking to them. I really don't. See what I got for you? See what I got? <laughs> Helen brought you a nice little sardine. See what Helen brought you? Helen brought you a nice little sardine. See the nice little sardine? See what Helen brought you? Nice little sardine. You're supposed to eat it. Yum, 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 yum. Don't you like it? They're imported. <laughs> I guess I better rinse this out. It's all full of little gooey things. Probably mice heads. No, it looks more like cotton balls. Oh, Miss Moray told you about the mice, huh? <laughs> Geez, they were cute. What do they eat? What? Dolphins. Oh, fish. Hiya, fella. <laughs> what kind of fish? Butterfish. Yeah, that reminds me. I better fill those formaldehyde jars for Friday. If you need anything, you just give me a whistle. I better get that sardine out of there. Oh, you wouldn't bite Helen, would you? You wouldn't bite little Helen. I wouldn't hurt you. You know that. So you wouldn't bite little Helen, would you? <laughs> Here. That's a goody, goody boy. <laughs> wow. 
What are you doing, oh. Helen? Well, I, I was... Never mind. Go on with your work. You know, Helen, you are such a sympathetic person. You have pets, I imagine. Cats, lots of cats. They don't allow them in my building. Plants, then. I bet you have hundreds of green things crawling up the windows. If I had green things crawling up my window, I'd move out. No plants, either? Two gloxinias. Oh, gloxinias. Oh, such trumpets, such trumpets. <laughs> they never bloom. My apartment's too cold. Oh, that is a shame. You live alone, don't you, Helen? Yes, I live alone. But you have friends, of course, other custodial colleagues, perhaps, clubs you belong to, social clubs, activities? I'm used to being alone. Oh, you are such a nice person, Helen. Does seem unjust that so much more than that is required. You must be overwhelmed by this environment here. <laughs> To have so many personal delicacies and be forced to behold the complexity of an electrical and chemical world must be devastating. Nevertheless, I cannot oh, allow uh, it to fall. Excuse me, I, I thought I'd set up the formaldehyde jars tonight, so all I have to do is a dissection stuff tomorrow. Very good, Dan. And I'll need a 20-liter one for the lungs. What's the formaldehyde for? That's what I've been trying to tell you, Helen. The experiment series on the dolphin will terminate. On Friday. Dr. Crocus gave us the orders tonight. That's why it's concerned me, because you've apparently become fond of the mammal. You mean they're gonna kill it? I'm going to sharpen up the bone sauce, too. We won't have any trouble getting through the skull of this one. No, sir. Everything's going to be perfect. <laughs> what for? Just because it don't talk, they gotta kill it? Of course, you wanted to be kind. You didn't mean any harm. You didn't know what delicate rhythm you might have